I've been following the box truck van build thing for a while. I just, I love small spaces. Um, downsizing has felt really good to me. I've had the big, big house and just going smaller, smaller. And when I started seeing people were converting vans and stuff I'm like, well, I could probably do that. And it seemed like it would be the easiest in a box truck. I think if anybody feels a draw to try this out, I think they should. I don't think you have to overinvest. I'd say go simple to see if you really like it. Once I close myself in here, I just forget where I am. I'm in my own little house and I, I love it. Hi, I'm Eric and this is my stealth camper van that I made out of a box truck. I don't have a name for it. We just call it the stealth. <laughs> so this is a 2000 Ford box truck. Um, I've been partial to Fords my whole life and I was looking for something kind of specific. I knew I wanted to do a box truck conversion as opposed to a van. And a couple things that I really needed was the air deflector up front for storage and gas mileage. I get a, between 13 and 14 on the highway, which is not terrible, and then around 10, 11 in the city. I'll show you in the back. I also wanted the barn doors in back. That was real important to me. This has got the V8 in it. I wouldn't have cared if it had the Triton V10 or the V8. Uh, I paid $1,500 for the truck and then immediately put $2,500 uh, into a trans with a two-year warranty. So for $4,000, that's where I started on the build. And it's just been, I've had it two years and put about 30,000 miles on it in two years is traveling primarily just the Western states, but it's been a blast. So it had no branding on it when I got it. A lot of people think that I must've got it from Vortex Energy Systems. I did not. Uh, that is a made up name. I just happened to be into sacred geometry, which is what this symbol is called the seed of life. And then this is one of our research vehicles at Vortex Energy Systems. And it's tomorrow's technology today. So just keeping with uh, the theme of this is a work truck, I did add a couple of these yellow blinking lights on, you know, if we ever have a real Vortex emergency that we have to attend to. Uh, the ladder is more decorative than not, but it makes it easy to climb up and clean the solar panels or work up top. I have 200 watt solar panels up there that work real good. Um, the phone number, if you, I don't know if you happen to notice it, 8675309, like one of the most famous phone numbers there is, and it doesn't ring anywhere in the United States. So I thought it was safe to do that off the old Tommy Two Tone uh, song for uh, Jenny. So a couple things I did on this side, uh, I put a little inverter up here, just 150 watt inverter. I keep a razor, an electric razor stowed in that little bin for all my cables. If I ever need less than 150 watts, I can charge something while I'm driving. So phone or laptop or, or whatever. If you look to keep the, the whole thing super stealthy, I have a hard hat and a vest. Oh, that is just, I've never worn either of those things. And uh, behind it, I'll show you, there is a flux capacitor, and that's really what we do at, at Vortex Energy Systems. We fix flux capacitors. It actually lights up and blinks and makes noise and all that stuff. So um, there, I don't have any awning on here. I usually carry just one of those 10 by 10 uh, shades. The nice thing about a box truck like this that's real solid, this was the Supreme box truck. Great insulation already in it, but you can just screw eyelets wherever it's handy. So I have eyelets to, to brace the sun canopy with zip ties on front and back. So that's primarily the anchor. And then if I need to do guy lines, I, I can, but for pretty much just attaching it to the truck works really good. And then on both sides of the truck, depending on what side I want to set the galley unit and everything else on. And then I hung these on both sides where I can hang like a white trash bag with the handles on it and it keeps it ready and I, just to dispose easily. I did a couple of hooks back here for either towels or wetsuits. Just super easy to screw in wherever you need it and you don't really notice it. The last thing I did, um, I tow a vehicle and this little tow uh, bar, the guy made me a step and it's just a nice little step to get in and out. This is my little tow behind. It's a 1986 Suzuki Samurai. I've loved these since I first saw them in the early 80s. I was in the Virgin Islands and saw them there. It's a perfect little tow vehicle. You, that's why people ha be, have them behind motorhomes. They weigh about 2,000 pounds. But I wanted it to be in the theme, so this is our Vortex Energy System research vehicle. So once we get to some place out in the desert, we put the magnet signs on, we turn on the amber strobe and move around and people always ask what we're doing and i always have a crazy bullcrap answer about 
we're looking up geomagnetic ley lines and everything else and then I tell them I'm kidding but it's just part of the fun of the whole the whole thing and this was a great price I got this for three thousand dollars hardly had to put any money in it I did the same seat covers on this because they were all ripped up as well but it's a super fun and it just makes super fun little vehicle and makes a fun package with the truck and this one so we can take a tour inside. I've seen so many amazing builds. People are kind of afraid of decor and color and stuff. I see white walls and really clean. I went for like the opposite of that, like a full on gypsy wagon, 70s color scheme. And it was just so easy to build, come on in. So here we are inside. I'll just give you a quick tour. I decided last minute to put a TV and a DVD player in it. It is fun to watch a movie if the weather's bad or whatever and it looks big because it's a small space. I wanted the galley unit. This is a four foot galley unit and all of the cabinets here are to store bought. I didn't make these cabinets. These came from Home Depot and the countertop came from Home Depot, just standard. I wanted it regular height, regular depth to just feel as, as kitcheny as it could. Um, the sink is a manually pumping from a two and a half gallon the freshwater jugs you just buy at the rectangular ones you just buy at the store. I don't have a permanent stove. I just use, whether it's inside or out, I have two of these butane stoves. Um, it's always well ventilated. I've got lots of ventilation in the truck for that. I usually cook outside. And I just knew I wanted the countertop space as opposed to a permanent stove in it. I, all of my utensils keep here, the stove down here pots and pans, kind of a junk drawer with all my accessories, but it works really great. I've got a fridge here and it's more, it's really less of a fridge and more of like those trucker coolers, the 12 volt coolers. And I can run that for almost a week straight on my battery. So the 12 volt system runs an inverter. I have a 750 watt inverter, it runs the, the fridge, the TV, but he, lighting is just as low tech as it could be. They're just individual puck lights, but it's super convenient that anywhere I am, if I need to look in a drawer at night, I can just use it as a flashlight and it, and they last a long time. And the light is really good on these. I don't like that bluish led light. So I found the lights that just work perfect. So these are just screwed into place, both up and through. And I keep all my dishes and so I keep lots of teas and coffees always available, lots of water. I, I keep a back stock of those two and a half gallon rectangular storage bins, six to eight to 10, depending on how long my trip is gonna be. So the DVD player and some, a few videos are on this side. It's usually neater than that. But it, I usually, usually I have a fire effect or an aquarium effect, just ambiance. So this is my forward wardrobe hanging closet. I built the top half, but the bottom half is just, again, something you could buy stock from Home Depot. I chose the three drawer system here. It's 18 inches wide, regular countertop. And all I had to do was just finish, keep going up with it to create a closet above it. Super easy build. The, the box, the boxiness of the box made it so easy to, to do anything I wanted to do. So the air deflector in front was really important to me. I knew it would help a little bit on fuel savings. I don't know how much it helps because it was already on it, but it's really awesome for extra storage. You're really just looking at the top of the van in there. I store mats, beach chairs, uh, musical instruments, two ukuleles, my heater, propane tanks, and a portable shower system. All of that can stay up there out of the way and just hides away and you don't even know it's there. So really important to me was the ability to have a bathroom. Some people don't even have a porta potty, but I needed it. And this is my little cubicle. I made it big enough to feel comfortable in. So that's why it cuts into this space, but I'm really never here. I have plenty of room to cook where it's still open, but this bifolds, it also has a sink and a place to shower, it all drains. On the other side, I did storage as well. This is my linen closet and kind of a utility closet. I have an extra blanket in here because it's been cold, but it's a big locker. It's almost two feet deep. I did, was able to do a um, medicine cabinet and this is the back of the medicine cabinet coming into this cupboard. So this is a Home Depot cabinet here that I just finished all the way up and then was able to create 
a door and a space for whatever I needed it for. Sometimes I put a generator down here. Right now that's a box drum and my portable shower for my last trip is there. This is just a, kind of the junk drawer, but it's organized. I keep some tools really handy, a screwdriver, an A pair of pliers, zip ties, razor knife, just things I might need right away, but I keep a full toolbox and everything else. And then, then this is the last storage, kind of like a pantry, dry storage. This was from our last trip, so there's still some chips and things there, but just plenty of storage. So when you do a bed, a lot of times there's tons of room for storage. I did a, a different, I hadn't seen very many build videos where people use the slat arrangement and slides, and that's a really clever arrangement, but it makes storage kind of difficult if you want to get to it from the top or the front. So I made it to where I could get things, the stuff I use most often where I can get to real easy. So I have a chamois, a few tools, a hammer, things like that, that I can get just by opening here or access the same on this side. But if I want to get access, real easy access to all of it, these cushions come off. And then the whole thing opens up and I keep tons of stuff in here. I have my extra stove, I have tons of lighting. I've got a big bag of tent pegs and mallet and extra tools. I've got a regular toolbox and it's just so easy to get to and drop in and store like that. To make the bed, this is how I did it. So that hinges that way. These doors become braces. It can be two lounges or one lounge and one table. It, it converts a whole bunch of different ways and lots of storage under these boxes. It's 50 inches wide, so a little smaller than a full, but two people, I'm super comfortable here. It's 75 inches across, so that's plenty of room for me. It wouldn't be for some super tall people. I think the clearance above me on the box that allows is about the same, about 75 inches. So one of the things I was a little not too sure about was the table. And I ended up finding a really awesome table. I got it from Amazon. It's called a Beckworth. They're about a hundred bucks. I can set it on the ground or I can set it like this to be the right height. I put it outside, inside. It just works so good. It's either, it's adjustable, either table height to sit at. Uh, like if I was sitting here and watching TV, it's out of the way, easy. And then, and still room to pass by it or I take it outside, barbecue on it, but these are just awesome. And I haven't seen something as sturdy as this is fold up as small as it does. I lecture on uh, different energetic phenomenon and geometry and frequency. I host four workshops a year, full day workshops at the Integratron. And we call our workshop Sonic Geometry, which is creating a connection between geometric forms and musical harmonic. We have two videos, actually three now, and we made the first video in 2013, hoping we'd get a thousand views or 10,000 views from, you know, people that were just into that stuff. And it has millions of views. So it tells me that there's a lot of interest in, in what's happening here and what we're learning. So I have a radio show that's podcast primarily. Most of our listeners are podcast listeners around the world. It's called Awakening Code Radio. We will talk to anybody that feels like they have something to contribute to this global awakening but it's just about being a better human on this planet and thinking about why are we really here? You know, what are we doing? It's not just to be consumers and taxpayers and slaves to our mortgages. I still have a job, I, I go to work, but I'm not nearly as preoccupied uh, because I just don't have to make near as much money as I used to. <laughs> now I'm, I'm gonna be so bummed that it's not all perfectly painted and clean and- Nobody's gonna hold it again. Every, <laughs> I will. Yeah. But people love this table. I don't know if you're familiar with the Beckworth table. I didn't get the shot yet. Oh, oh. Oops. Sorry.